Porter's Five Forces was introduced by Michael S. Porter in his first article in Harvard Business Review, March, April 1979. The title of the article was How Competitive Forces Shape Strategy. The model identifies five competitive forces which affect the company's competitive position. These are existing competitors in the industry, threats of new entrants coming into the industry, bargaining power of the suppliers to our firm, bargaining power of buyers, threats of substitute products or services, that is different products or services that fulfill the same needs as our product. Now we will go through each of the five market forces. The first one is existing competitors in the industry. Rivalry among existing competitors takes the familiar form of jockeying for position, using tactics like price competition, product introduction and advertising. Intense rivalry is related to the presence of a number of factors. Here are some of the most important. If competitors are numerous in an industry, the rivalry among these will be hard. You only have to look at cities that have a lot of fast food restaurants. If the growth in an industry is slow, the firm can only grow if it conquers customers from the competitors. This will intensify rivalry. If the product or service lack differentiation, rivalry intensifies. Customers can get exactly the same value by our competitors. Differentiation could be trademarks as Apple or functionality no one else offers in their product. If fixed costs are high, it creates strong temptation to cut prices when demand are going down. We see this effect in price rates for freight in shipping. When the demand for freight capacity falls, the price falls rapidly. The ship owners cannot modify supply of capacity. They will sail as long as the running expenses are covered. If productive capacity can't match demand, there will be periods of overcapacity if supply rises or demand falls. This will lead to periods of price cutting. An example is wind energy. Overcapacity can rise so much that the power is almost given away. Exit barriers are high, which means that a firm gets high cost if they stop production. In such a situation, companies in the industry will keep competing even though they may be earning low or even negative on investment. An example would be a firm where they have to make an environmental cleanup of the soil if they stop production. In such an industry, the rivalry would be extreme. Their competitors are diverse in strategies, origins and personalities. An example is the healthcare industry. Some organizations have commercial goals, others are non-profit organizations with foundation in doing good to mankind. They have different ideas about how to compete and continually run head-on into each other in the process. The following main competitive force is threat of new entrants. The seriousness of the threat of entry depends on the barriers present and on the reaction that the entrants can expect from the existing competitors. Now follows the major sources of barriers to entry in an industry. When firms in an industry have scale economics in fields such as production, research, distribution, marketing, then it is difficult for new competitors to enter the industry. Examples are firms such as McDonald's in the fast food industry or Amazon with sales and distribution over the internet. Now follows product differentiation. If the existing firms have strong brand Identification, a new entrance must spend heavily to overcome customer loyalty. 
it is one of the most important entry barriers in soft drinks industry, with Coca-Cola and Pepsi as classic examples. Capital acquirement in an industry creates a barrier to entry. If it requires large, unrecoverable financial resources upfront in order to enter the industry and compete. This limits the pool of likely entrants in industries such as mineral extraction and computer manufacturing. The existing companies in an industry may have cost advantages that aren't available to potential rivals. These advantages can stem from the effects such as the learning curve, favorable locations and access to raw materials. IKEA has strategic place stores and warehouses, they own forests, they have great experience in listening to customers' needs and maintaining a high quality. Access to distribution channels. The newcomer on the block must of course secure distribution of this product or service. A new food product, for example, must displace others, such as Nestle's products, from the supermarket itself via price, promotions, intense selling efforts, or some other means. The government can limit or even foreclose entry to industries with control as license requirements and limits on access to raw materials. Most countries have some sort of regulation in industries such as trucking, liquery, retailing, and fishing. The government also affects entry barriers through control such as air and water pollution standards and safety regulations. Other circumstances, as the above mentioned, can influence the barriers for new entrants in an industry, but they are a good starting point for an analysis about threats of new entrants. Now follows bargaining power of suppliers in relation to the industry. If suppliers are powerful, they can raise prices or reduce the quality of goods and services. A supplier group is powerful if the following circumstances are present. The group of suppliers are dominated by a few companies. An example is Grain. Five companies control the world's trade. A supplier has a unique position. We cannot buy the product elsewhere or it is really expensive to change supplier. By choosing a specific computer software supplier, many firms place themselves in this situation. Our supplier pose a credible threat of integrating forward into the industry's business. This provides a check against the industry's ability to improve the terms on which it purchases. In the fashion industry, we see trademarks such as Gucci and Prada getting their own physical or online stores. This gives them a powerful position against small independent retail stores. The industry to which we belong is not an important customer of the supplier group. Other industries are more important. We are in a weak position if we want product adjustments or extra service from the supplier. Now follows bargaining power of buyers. A buyer group is powerful in the following situations. Our customers purchase in large volumes. An example is government purchase of large quantities of office standard products such as paper. They are powerful in this negotiation. The products the customers purchase from the industry are standard. The buyers, sure that they can always find alternative suppliers, may play one company against another, as they do in the trucking industry. Our product represents a significant fraction of our customers' total cost. The buyers are then likely to shop for a more favorable price. If it represents a small fraction of buyers' cost, buyers are usually much less price sensitive. If our buyers earn low profits, they will always try to lower purchasing costs, even if the item does not represent a large fraction of their costs. If our product is unimportant to the quality of the buyer's product or service, they are price sensitive. The opposite, where the quality of the buyer's product is well affected by the industry's product, buyers are generally less price sensitive. 
An industry in which this situation occurs is in oil field equipment, where malfunction can lead to large losses. If our industry's product or service does not save the buyer money, the buyer is price sensitive. Where our product or service can pay for itself many times over, the buyer is rarely price sensitive. This is true in services like investment banking and public accounting, where errors in judgment can be costly and embarrassing. Our position is weak and our buyers strong if they can pose a credible threat of integrating backward to make the industry's product. The producers of automobile have often used the threat of self-manufacture as a bargaining lever. The last of the five competitive forces is threat of substitute products or services. Threats from substitute products means that firms from other industries completely or partially can capture our customers. Another industry's product can meet the needs of our customers. We have seen this in the camera industry. Today many needs for pictures are covered using the camera integrated in the mobile phone. There is almost no sale of cheap and middle class cameras anymore. The camera industry today consists only of high-end cameras. Once you have completed the industry analysis using the five competitive forces, you must develop a strategy for your business. This is necessary to achieve a position in the industry that is profitable. Now follows an example of application of the model. We will produce a game app to mobile phone. There are many in the industry. There are players on the field we don't even know. The rivalry is really hard. There are almost no costs associated with developing an apps. It is often a side project for students in computer science. Threats from new entrants are Hi! There are a lot of programmers we can hire to do the job. Suppliers' bargaining power is Low. Buyers can look for another game. The bargaining strength is very high. An app can of course be replaced by a game played on a computer, but is not as mobile, so the threat is fairly low. According to the analysis, it is generally a bad industry. You need to develop one highly differentiated game if you want to make money. Now follows a criticism of Porter's five forces. The model is often accused of being a static model that exists in an environment that is constantly evolving. Michael Porter has responded to this criticism by stating that the model can analyze how the relationship between companies, customers, competitors, suppliers and substitutes will develop over time. You can make predictions of the future forces. All five forces carry equal weight, which is not true for all companies. You can argue that buyers are more important than the other aspects of the model, and that suppliers may also have a special status. The model looks at both suppliers and customers as a kind of enemies, where you have to be the strongest. However, it will in many cases be at advantage to see your customers and suppliers as partners and thereby achieving some common benefits, which are not possible if you constantly work against each other. Finally, it must be mentioned that Porter's five forces provide a solid overview of the competitive situation which we are part of.